Hello, Junta viewers. This is Avindian, welcoming you to a new episode of Out of the Park Baseball 21 with the Baltimore Orioles. And we have a problem this episode. And this episode has a name. Well, the episode has a name, obviously, but so does the problem. This is that problem's name. Emerson Hancock is a ticking time bomb. Because of his contract. He will eventually cost us more than he is worth. And that's true of anyone with a long contract. That's part of the business of doing baseball. But for Hancock in particular, he's lost his ability to not give up homers. And he's lost a lot of his control. All because of his shoulder injury last season. And this is another part of baseball, it's just part of life. Now, OSA doesn't think much of him either. And we can see how precipitous his fall has been. From July of 2026 to, to January of 2027, he went from one of the best pitchers in the major leagues to one of the worst. Uh, not one of the worst, that's a bit of an overstatement. And I don't like it. And I do like Hancock as a player. And he's, up until last season, has been nothing but productive for us. But, here's the thing. I kind of know how the engine works, but I've played so much out of the work baseball, I know how they look at certain things. This is not a player who will opt out of his contract. He's going to be very intelligent and realize, look, I'm a 50 overall now. No one's going to pay me $20 million a year. I've got to get rid of him. Not at any cost, but I'm hoping we can get a team with deep pockets to take him because right now he's cheap. If the rest of his contract was for $6 million a year, I would keep Hancock. And I'd do it with a smile. But he's not. So let's kick the tire. Let's shop him. And I will take whatever I can get. I'm getting offers, which is excellent. So there, there are two things I'd like to get from this exchange. One of two possibilities, rather. Possibility one. I get a player who is better than Hancock. Or possibility two, I get someone whose contract runs out faster than Hancock's. So let's look through this list and see if anyone is particularly noteworthy. I see Steven Strasburg. Hi, Steven. It's only a one-year deal. And there's every expectation Strasburg would be better than Hancock. I mean, it looks like he's been bouncing up and down between the majors and the minors, which is just silly to me. But let's see if we couldn't do even a little bit better. Casey Mize. No. Again, it's worth mentioning, but I'm going to reinforce it. The moment I see that somebody has a low movement, I'm just going to instantly reject them out of hand. Nope. Mm-hmm. Definitely not. Oh, if I pitched somewhere outside of Baltimore, I would probably take Yamamoto. But since I don't, I'm training for Strasburg. I think he is the best choice here. And... 
it alleviates our biggest problem right now. I'm doing it. I'm going to see if I can't get a prospect or two out of you, though. But I probably can't, which is fine. Uh, what about Mr. Baumeister here? I mean, Baumeister's not that great. Randy Hellstrom. No. Steve Anderson. Uh-uh. Jose Castro. I like him a lot, but there's also no reason for the Yankees to give him to me. Yeah, that's totally fair. <laughs> now, it isn't lost me that we're actually trading within our division, and I normally don't like to do that. But there's a couple reasons that I think this is a smart move. Could I get Alex Perez? You need to think about it. I will happily make this offer and see what you think. No way. Yeah, that's fine. Um... Are you shitting me? All of a sudden you won't make the trade. Why? I'm trying to figure out if this is just the game being broken or what's going on. And now you won't even think about it. Damn it. Uh, let's shop him somewhere else then. I got greedy and it cost me. Something changed about the Yankees that has convinced them to keep Strasburg now. And there is no longer a one-to-one -one replacement in terms of starting pitchers. So, let's take us a Caleb Ferguson. It's not as sexy, but I'm going to pull the trigger now before it bites me on the butt. You know what, fans? You're just going to have to accept it and ex trust that I know what I'm doing. Uh, Caleb Ferguson, I'm going to have you fill in as the fifth starter. No, not Kyle Doey. Definitely not Kyle Doey. There we go. And then you're my anti-lefty guy. Yeah, that just had to happen. And I don't love it, but I feel good now that it's over with. Um, That was not a sustainable pitcher. And I will... I am going to shortlist him just because I'm curious to see what happens to him. I just want to keep an eye on Mr. Hancock. And you know what? It's possible he recovers from his shoulder injury to something of his former self. I'm willing to bet he won't. And I think we're making the right call here. I hope we're making the right call. But, okay, now we can continue our season with far fewer concerns. <laughs> I think where we'll really feel Hancock's problem is going to be if we make the playoffs again. That's going to really suck. Because, um, oh damn, he's even better at contact. Dude. Uh, any big changes in the minors? Not really. Manny Mendez looks a tiny bit better. You could be our center field solution, which if you'd asked me a season ago when I traded for him, I don't think I would have believed you. 
And I'm still not convinced that he is... Um, first of all, let me set him to... I see where he goes. Um, he's 22. He dominated in, in high A. I think he can handle a promotion to triple A. But we're going to... We're going to keep a close eye on him. I can't believe Glaber Torres has hit 400 homers and led the league in homers last season. That's, it's just silly is what it is. Like, I know last season there was the rabbit ball and home runs were at an all-time high, but that doesn't mean it'll always be like that. Maybe I shouldn't take the playoffs for granted. We're struggling a bit out of the gate here. Uh, what's going on? Is this the usual? I remember Grayson Rodriguez. Good for you. I'm glad to see you're doing well. Well, sort of well. What did I get for you? You turn into Austin Hendrick and Judson Fabian and Caden Matheny. So you know what? Great decision. Um, right. It happens every season. Some hitter doesn't hit at the start of the season. And it looks like this season, it's Hendrick and Mountcastle and uh, Bobby Witt. Tim Tal was crushing it. Everyone else, not so much. Um, has he even had 100 at-bats yet? A little more than that. We got to give him time. Um, and until we've given him a bit more time, I'm not going to change up this lineup that much. Even Fabian's a bit disappointing. But it's only relative to his greatness in the minor leagues. So, you know, we'll deal with it. Um, I have a lot of people's contracts coming up. Uh, you want to go out on your own. I can respect that. Um. I can probably do better than Woodworth as a pitching coach. But he's also super young, though. So I'm going to go ahead and re-sign him. It's not that he's not amazing. It's just I could probably do a tiny bit better. Oh, hitting coach. Who do you get along with? Only Austin Hendrick. But you're still good at development, so I'm still going to keep you. And then you don't want to come back, which is fine. And then let's start going down the list and offering extensions. Okay, Alan Mills doesn't want to come back. Yeah, a lot of a lot of the coaches in my system are going to be like, I want a chance to coach in the majors, which is completely reasonable. Uh, let's go ahead and give. You don't want to come back. That's fine. I don't actually want you back. You're only a poor pitching coach. I do like Mark Grace. I'm not going to pay through the nodes for averages, but I also don't want to have to keep re-signing most of my coaching staff. And I'm more likely to re-sign a younger coach rather than an older coach. Like, Anthony Villa or Villa, you don't want to come back. I guess that's fair. God, 
Kyle Moore, I'm going to give you a chance. But everyone else here, I think we can move on from. Now, bench coach. Um... Andy McTeague is great at development. He's amazing at it. But he's not that great in terms of relationships. What if we look at, say, Alan Mills? Um, everyone would hate you a lot. Kevin Cash. That is our biggest issue right now. Um, and for that reason, Andy McTeague is... He's warm tap water. But sometimes warm tap water is what you want to drink. And I think because his development influence remains excellent, and because he at least gets along with Jack Leiter and the people he doesn't get along with aren't terribly important, I'm going to go ahead and give him a new contract. He's not the best possible coach, but he is the best possible coach that we can afford. And I think that's an okay thing. So let's give ourselves another month before we make any changes to the lineup. As I've, of, as I've often said, you get the first 150 or the first 100 for free. Um, and you don't want to make drastic changes until you're sure that they're actually warranted. Player development. Mountcastle is starting to dip a bit. Wit is dipping a bit. A couple of other players are either improving improving slightly or getting slightly worse. Nothing too noteworthy. Uh, Chase Costello, just one pitcher of the month. He certainly throws baseballs. No one can deny that. I mean, that's amazing, but I also don't really care. Um, again, you'll notice we're not really sending our scout out to scout the amateur draft, and that's simply because any pick we have is going to be so deep into the first round that I'd have to scout like 50 people to get anything meaningful. And I'm just not prepared to waste your time and my time. God damn it, Pierrette. What the shit? Um, I'm not prepared to waste our time to that degree. Um, yeah. Oh, we can have Pedro King back. Do we want him back? Not necessarily. Why is Kyle Doey listed as a starting pitcher when he is manifestly not one of those things? Is it because I made him a starter accidentally for like three seconds? Uh, Mr. King, I would like you to go to rehab. And we're going to get stopped again here in a couple of minutes. Here you go. Alex Vaughn. I'm just going to trade you. I think that's the best choice. I know I won't get a lot for you, but I also don't care. Uh, I only want prospects for you. I'll even take a borderline prospect. I'm just looking to get something of value for a player that otherwise I'll probably just release him. Nope. And you're gone. Yeah. that's It's an easy choice for me. All right, onward and upward. Now we could really start trying to grab, Jesus Christ, guys, would you quit? 
Uh, one of the things that we desperately need to start doing is rebuilding our farm system to a certain degree. Uh, what do I mean by that? We've got a lot of players that are at or near the high miners. But what we don't have that we had in the past is the real high potential guys. And we don't have to have an amazing world beating farm system. We just can't have something um, where people aren't getting attention. Now, Manny Mendez, you raise an excellent concern. And that you're a very good hitting third baseman. How on earth are you already eligible for... Are you counting international contract on international complex time as professional time? Because you shouldn't. Hmm. Mendez is a little too good to throw away. So I'm going to go ahead and put him on the 40 man. And I'm going to start taking control of his development. And I'm actually going to promote you to low A. And let's get you on the 40 man. I don't have to do it right now. You know what? That's a good point. I don't have to do that right now. Um, I'm going to have to make decisions on Reese and Neil, which I'm definitely ready to do in the very near future. <sighs> Reese, my dude. It's the walks. But you're also such a good potential closer that I, I have to give you at least a shot in the majors. Um, this goes without saying, I'm not going to put him on there now because I don't have to. But again, this goes without saying, both of you guys are getting added to the 40 man. I'm not taking pictures of your caliber and letting them go to anyone else for free. Yeah, the walks, you got to get them under control, buddy. If you can get the walks under control, you're going to be a valuable contributor to the bullpen. But until you do, you're almost more of a liability. Anil, same thing, basically. You need to work it, focus on throwing strikes. Um... Because you've got all the other tools that are going to make you a pretty damn fine starting pitcher someday. I just need you to, to fight a little bit more for me. We've got a ton of outfield help in the upper minors, which is great. Um, we're probably going to want to start making decisions on these guys relatively soon. But that is what it is. We could use just in general more depth, but that's I always say that. Because it's always true. Uh, Quirin Dongo's biggest problem is his defense. If I can get him to play center field well, I have no objections to calling him up. Okay. Before we resume, uh, salaries is what I meant to click. Who here needs to be either traded or negotiated? with I see one right now I like Daryl Hernaiz an awful lot I really truly do and he wants to get paid and I don't begrudge him that I am not paying a backup second baseman nine million dollars a year that would be just the stupidest decision I could ever make. I can't afford that, and I won't afford that. Tim Tawa, I have no idea what to make of you. And maybe, just like the real, the real treasure was the friends who made her along the way, maybe you're the real center fielder that I've always wanted, and I just keep trying to make you something that you're not. Fair point. 
And I don't have an easy response to that right now. But I also know I don't want to pay you millions of dollars a year. Bobby Witt, I genuinely don't know what to make of you. I genuinely don't. And maybe I kind of ruined you by not letting you have a starting job, but you're so far a huge disappointment. He's playing good third base. I'll give him that much. But yeah, instead of being an impact hitter, you're just, you're not hitting homers. You're not hitting a lot for contact, so... I'm not enthused about paying you a bunch of money either. I think trading hair naïs has to happen right now. Or do something really dumb like trade Garcia. But I can't see myself doing that, even though he's also having an off-season, off-beginning to the season. Um... He's also lost a lot of his shine. Well, that's interesting. Do I trade you? And promote Hair Naïs? Like, here's why. Here's why I'm thinking of it. First of all, the guy gets on base. And we really need players like that on this team. Second, he's a pretty solid second baseman. And third, I know he's never been a great hitter, but he's his other tools are good enough that I think he can be a decent level of success. What has changed about Garcia? Why has his potential fallen off so much? He's losing his ability to hit for contact. That's bad. That is a key part of his value. And he's also losing his defense. I wonder. Can we make a deal for Garcia... And promote Hernaiz. I always get the sense when I look at Garcia that he is a disappointment. And he really hasn't been. I'm kind of being unfair to him. I think it's because mentally I put so much stock on him being part of our core. When, more, when merely what he's been has been an excellent second baseman. I know he's only got one all-star appearance. I know he's only got one silver slugger. He's been consistently pretty solid. Maybe not world beating, but pretty damn solid. And just because he's not a leadoff man doesn't mean I should punish Garcia in my memory for that. Um, you are a concern that I have, and I'm going to put Hernaiz on the trade block, and let's just see what kind of offers I get for him. One of the things that I've toyed with doing in this series is turning on draft pick trading, but it's so easy to exploit. That I can't do it in good conscience. Um, the AI's never really been very smart about it. Um, hey, 16 strikeouts for Jack Leiter. At least he's the same as he's always been. And here's Hair Naïs getting better. What the hell, dude? Uh, Edward Morales just put a lot of extra spice on his fastball, which is pretty interesting. Which is funny, because he's actually got a torn ligament in his elbow. Uh, Bernardi could be a decent one. I can, I can approve of that. Oh, that's Tanner Witt. Oof. 
I hear I was getting excited about Bobby Witt. All right, it's now June. Let's let's look at making some changes. Ryan Mountcastle, my dude. I don't know what's happened to you, but I can't leave you where you are. I can't. You're holding back the team. Uh, so I'm actually going to promote push just Judson Fabian ahead of Mountcastle. Yeah, dude, I don't know what happened to you, but please stop it and be better. And I'm also going to promote Tawa in the lineup a bit. Uh, Rushman's fine. Let's bump Tawa to seven. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Fabian replaces Mountcastle. Actually, I should give Tawa his props, right? The dude's been crushing it. He should be the one hitting fifth. Talk about knowing when to start hitting. The dude has picked a good time to start crushing baseballs. And there we go. Yeah, I'm sorry, Luis Garcia. I, I feel bad apologizing to a fictional character, but... Well, actually, I guess he is a real-life person, isn't he? But there's a fictionalized version of the real Luis Garcia. Anyway, I feel I still feel bad about being mad at his level of production when he's giving me what he's giving me, and what he's giving me is very good. I'm just like, eh, but it's not this weird ideal I've got. I just need to accept that. Uh, Ian Moeller, eh, he's not going to be that expensive, and I want Rushman to have a quality backup catcher. So I'm fine with that. Look, in terms of war, the only one who's being unproductive is Mountcastle. And I have to think this is just a weird first half of the season kind of thing. Because he's never failed to hit in the majors. Ever. So I'm going to check something. I'm going to check his BABIP. And it's just in the toilet. So this this strikes me as the game telling me Mountcastle's been unlucky. Not that he's been bad, but that he's been unlucky. Because consistently his career average is in the 320 range. And he's hitting 80 points lower than that. So for whatever reason, uh, he's having some issues. He should get better. Bobby Witt, at a certain point, you have to listen to what people are telling you. And your minor league track record keeps telling me that you're not a very good hitter. And I keep getting sucked in by the prospect sheen. Which is another flaw in my dealings with our team. I tend to look at highly ranked prospects and I tend to believe in them a little bit too much. And what I see from Witt is just he's an average third baseman that can't hit and is therefore kind of a liability. Like, I'm not going to get rid of him for pennies on the dollar. I don't feel that level of compulsion. But he's wanting an awful lot of money. I mean, $3.5 is not too bad. But yeah, he's just... I look at the top part of our team, and I see a lot of the same names, and I'm encouraged. And then I start dropping down, and it's like, oh. Instead of getting Arenado, I've gotten a couple of okay-ish replacements for him. How is Arenado doing this season? Can I redeem myself by saying that he's playing badly? Eh, he's not playing as well as he used to. I think I definitely got rid of him at the right time, but he's certainly not exceptional. And maybe this is just kind of an early season funk, and once the All-Star break passes, everyone will start going back to form. That's what I'm hoping anyways. Um, Daniel Corona Jr. will start drawing more walks. Uh, this is problematic, buddy. I need more of those. I 
I wish I had that elite level leadoff hitter. If anything could kickstart this lineup, it is an elite level leadoff hitter. And I truly believe that. And I think there's a tiny percentage chance that Heronais could be that hitter. But with him, it's putting all of our eggs into one basket. Which is namely that he'll draw walks. Because if he doesn't, the rest of his school the rest of his skill set screams average major leaguer. And that's why I'm increasingly looking at him and deciding I want to trade him now while teams still think he might have high value. Because a lot of the times the AI looks at the overall rating and says, gimme, gimme, gimme. Or looks at the defense and says, gimme, gimme, gimme. And I think that it's not a bad approach. I just think in this case, they're likely to overrate him. So let's shop him around. Let's just see what I can get. My Sarth Prospects. And I get a bunch of garbage. I'm not honestly shocked by that. And here's why. The AI sees this number just as much as I do. Which means I'm going to have to take on salary if I want any kind of quality player from him. And you know what? I'm fine with that. I'm fine with taking on a bit of salary if it gets me someone who can make our team better. I'm getting a lot of offers, but most of them aren't terribly impressive. Um, I'm getting some interesting names, but they all want a lot of money, and they all want longer contracts, and if that's the case, I might as well keep the guy I've already got. Like, unless you're getting an absolute megastar, I don't see a ton of value in trading him. Just to be rid of him a bit earlier. Because I'm not hurting that badly for money. I'm not. And if I have to pay him for a year at a higher rate, that's fine. It's not necessarily what I want, but it's fine. Um... Now, his track record has been sometimes he gets on base, sometimes he doesn't. I'm not going to help another team out and give him this much salary relief for a player that could still end up being an important part of my team. I can maybe just offer him less in arbitration, and if I piss him off, I piss him off, and I just live with the consequences. The bullpen's really struggling this season. Um, no one's pitching particularly effectively other than Vizcaino. Um, and it could just be players getting older. And it could just be 15 innings is a very tiny sample size. Um, it is what it is. Let us proceed to the first year player draft. We've got two first round picks, Mike. Well, one first round pick and one, um, and one supplemental pick. Excuse me. What must happen is LA must have had a protected draft pick. No, they didn't. Oh, no, they totally did. Yeah, they're not... Yeah, here they are. They're top 
I think if you're top 15, you can't lose your, your draft pick. Which is fine. I mean, I would have loved to have had the number 12 pick as opposed to the number 33 and the number 6 in the supplemental round, but... We're going to probably have to take a couple of chances if we're going to want to get quality value out of this draft. So what do we got here? All players. We've got a few starting pitchers, and we've got a couple of really good relief pitchers. This is clearly a pitcher-heavy draft, which is totally fine to me. I don't object to that at all. And what we need most right now is starters. Um, but let's look at some of these relievers and let's just see. Okay, these are your typical. I've only got two pitches. Maybe if I find a third or fourth pitch, I could be a starter. But chances are that won't happen. That's fine. Um, those players still have value to me, and I can still look more at them in the future. Looks like there's two starters that seem pretty good. Roger and Ego, absolutely not. I can't do it. I cannot bring a pitcher up to the majors with low movement. It cannot be done. Lawson is closer, actually. You are much closer to what I'm looking for. Now, your downside is that you don't have much of an upside. Look, if you develop perfectly, you could be a back-end starter, which is completely fine. Not everyone has to be an ace. I get that. But I'd like a little bit more potential. But there's two things here that give me room for hope. First of all, this is work ethic, and it does matter in this game. It can be hard to see how, but it does matter. It means there's a higher chance to actually reach their potential. Second is his age. He's 18, and he's a rail-thin, six-foot uh, teenager, which means he's probably going to put on weight as he gets older, which means he's probably going to put on speed, and he does have... Four plus pitches. Well, two would actually be considered plus. I think 60 is where you get into the plus range. So you got two plus pitches and two good pitches. I'm going to do it. I'm going to draft Matthias Lawson, unless Alfred or Gettings is like amazing. Nope. And nope. Okay. Done. And we'll go to the supplemental pick. Now, I'm kind of tempted by picking up a reliever. And to the end, I think Hirschauer is the best choice. He's got elite stuff, very good movement. He's going to struggle a bit throwing strikes, which is fine. Uh, but he's already got two pretty well-developed pitches. And he's a ground ball pitcher, too. I'm, I'm going to take her shower. I see no reason to take anyone else. Wait, how did I only get to make two picks so far? Oh, I see. It just randomly considered it... Oh, I see, because after I was done, it was round two. Got it. Now I start getting into the hitters. And Kevin Anderson is not very good. Okay. Fair. Uh, he's got a load of defensive talent, but he can't hit at all. So, meh. Let's at least look at the starting pitchers. I don't want to let them go because the hitters here are so meh that I'd rather try to make the most out of our picks. Absolutely not. 
Possibly. Now remember that college stats are more predictive than high school stats. Because they're more accomplished as a player. And I don't think I can take a starter that doesn't throw strikes consistently. According to what my scout believes. You're closer. Um, you are much closer to the kind of pitcher I'd like to take a chance on. You had good competition, uh, you pitched at a good school, and you pitched pretty well. Um, your movement's nothing special, but your control and stuff are. Actually, those aren't special either. You know what? No, I'm talking myself into a pitcher, just for the sake of taking a pitcher. What else do we have? What about another reliever? Yeah, let's take another reliever. It's the boring choice, but we can always use more pitchers in the bullpen. Could we secretly become a starter? Wait, 100 plus? Ooh. And you're a ground ball pitcher. You are raw as fuck, my friend. But. If you make it. Look, there is a not there is a non-zero chance that he develops a third pitch and becomes a possible starter. I mean, pitchers that exceed a hundred miles an hour but still keep it on the ground are just there. There's not many of them. I'm very tempted by Mister Nicholson, so I'm going to take him. Also, his bonus demand super cheap, which is good to see. As expected, none of these hitters are so good that they've come off the board yet. Kevin Anderson. Now, at this young, they could literally be turn out to be anything, and we just have no way of knowing. He's not particularly good at drawing walks. He doesn't really hit for a lot of power. He hits for a decent level of contact. Again, everyone looks like a megastar in high school. So I can't take these numbers with anything but a grain of salt. On the other hand, he's an accomplished shortstop. He's quite good defensively. And he's got enough speed that if he turns into a slap-hitting shortstop, that could still have value. What else we got? We got Tim Arnold. Arnold is a decent third baseman who's got some potential hitting-wise. Not a ton of potential, but some. Hey, he also went not far from my hometown. That's where he grew up. Very cool. Um, mm, your ceiling is so low, though. Which I guess, you know, to be fair, we're already, already at that part of the draft. Willie Baca. He's got a ton of gap power. I'm going to take Anderson. Of all the player, of all the hitters I've seen so far, he's the only one that looks like he's got much of a future. I mean, he's going to basically have to totally reinvent his hitting approach, but maybe he will. And I'm prepared to pay a small sum to see what that might be. Who is the best power hitter left in this draft? Eric Kirkbride. Or Doug Smart. Doug Smart's actually better. Is your deal that you just don't want to sign? Yeah, that's your deal. And I get it. Um... You're probably better off going to school. So I'm not going to force that. JD Lerner. Let's take a shot at him. I will actually use a pick on Doug Smart. But I'm going to use a fifth round pick. 
And then if I, if, if I don't sign him, I don't sign him. And I genuinely stop caring at that point. Eric Kirkbride. And then whoever the best player left is. People really keep sleeping on Kurt Hanna. And I can see why. His movement is pretty terrible. But if he develops even a tiny bit of movement, he's actually a borderline starter. So I'm going to be that guy. I'm going to take the chance on him. And I'm going to see what we get out of him. And at this point, everyone's pretty much the same. So I'm just going to go ahead and say, finish the draft scouting director. I trust you. And there we go. Negotiate. You want your slot. I respect that. It's really hard, especially in Major League Baseball, to find stars late in the early in or late in the draft rather. Um, it can be done. Like I remember Mike Piazza's like a forty second round pick or something who was drafted as a favor because he was like a distantly related to Tommy Lasorda. I think there were like third cousins or something. I'm probably making that part up, but the rest of that happened. Um, but you have to hope that players develop a lot. And that's in between baseball and football, right? When you draft somebody in the NFL, especially in a first, second round, you expect them to be ready to play day one. Uh, when the Browns drafted uh, Jedrick Wills in the draft this season, they expect him to play left tackle um, day one when the season starts. That is not true in baseball. In baseball, you're, you're projecting for the future. It's rare apart from relievers and a few extremely special talents to have someone make the majors their first year out of the draft. And a lot of times it takes years. And so you have to consider that when you are making your decisions here. Look, I've got so much money in the budget for signing contracts. I'm going to offer him $8 million. It's only money and there's nothing else I can use for it that's any better. How much does Kirkbride want? Eh, I'm going to pass on Kirkbride. If you want to try again when you go to Prairie View a and M, I like you're hurting your draft stock, dude. I'm going to shortlist you just to see if you end up coming back and if you do, if you end up getting drafted higher. Okay. That's out of the way. Pedro King. <sighs> I look at this picture and I see Matt. That's what I see. He's not particularly good at anything. He's got a nice slider, I guess. That's a good thing to have. But the rest of his pitches are range from okay, as in his fastball, to mediocre. He's got good control, but doesn't really strike people out. He's supposed to keep the ball in the park, but doesn't always do that. I have absolutely no compunction to keep him around. And I'm only going to look at prospects, and if I get no one, I'll just cut him. Wow, you guys really want to keep reading, getting rid of Kevin Sim. Did he, like, personally offend you? Maybe he did. I would say he thinks he's got a bit more thunder in his bat. And I admittedly haven't had a lot of chances to scout him.
But I genuinely think I'm just better off just releasing him. Let's cut him. That's fine. I don't care. Bob Solis, look at you. You're an interesting kind of player, actually. Huh. Good looking out. Picking him up as an international free agent. Did I pay? Yeah, I got him for... Oh, I spent $5 million to get him. That's less exciting. Meh. That's fine. Um, people are content. They're maybe not happy. But then again, we're also not winning 100-plus games this season, so... Look, let me give you a, a concrete example. Daniel Corona Jr. is only 23 years of age. And look how long his development history has been. If I include all levels, he has been in our system for seven years. And this is by far what the average major league... Um, this is what major leaguers, the, this is a more typical path to the majors. Um, this is what we expect. And that's why when you're drafting anywhere out of, say, the top 10, you're not drafting for your present needs. You're drafting for what is my farm system need and then see where that takes you. Um... I've been very happy with Corona Jr. Very happy indeed. And I'm glad the shortstop is stabilized now. Uh, it's always important to have those positions stabilized. Hendrick is having a tiny bit of a second year issue. But it's not really by much. He's not necessarily a worse player. He's just not making quite as much contact. That's not drawing as many walks, which is also problematic. Um, do I make Tawa my cleanup hitter? That would be stupid, right? It would be stupid. Yeah, I can't do that. Uh, I could make Rushman my cleanup hitter. I guess there's some value in that. The difference between Hendrick and um, the difference between Hendrick and Rushman is Hendrick consistently hits for power. He hits doubles and homers, whereas Rushman seems pretty much homers or bust. He doesn't hit as many doubles, which is totally fine, and I'm still extremely pleased with the level of performance that he gave us and has been giving us. And he's been, you know, knock on wood, he's been extremely durable. And I think one of the smart decisions we made is to give a little more of the catching load to Ian Moeller so he's not in quite as much trouble. Daniel Cabrera doing Daniel Cabrera things. He's another one. It seems like he's kind of given up on doubles. Very strange. He's going to want so much money when his contract is up, but that's fine. Let's go to international free agency. Cindergaard is going to miss a week. That's what I have other pitchers for. Seven hits. I don't know what's going on here. This is very strange to me. It's got to either be a bug or I just don't have very many players on this team. But yeah, it's it's hilarious how we're getting beat like 70 to 1 regularly. 
Then again, none of these guys are even remotely prospects of any kind of actual talent. So maybe I'm just being a bit silly, but... Like, come on. It's still baseball. Yeah, 52 to 6. It's like, whatever, dude. Can I tell them to stop emailing me about the Rookie League? Oh, uh, you got day-to-day -day history. A 610 winning percentage is disappointing to you. With all due respect to Mr. Roca, fuck off. I am winning games at a very high rate. You need to put a sock in it. Um, right. You sure I can't get you to stay? No. You want a shot at the majors, which is fair. Yeah. I'm going to need to replace my assistant GM, which is fine. Please don't be... Okay. It's the chip I lost yesterday. I'm always worried when I put my foot under my desk and I feel something weird. But in this case, it was just a corn chip that I dropped a couple days ago. Um, okay. On we go. Oh, no. I tried to sign you and you said no, which is fair. I'm just going to try to lock in a couple more coaching spots just so I don't have quite so many to fill. Yeah, dude, you're 57 and you're not particularly good. I don't think it's worth me keeping you. There we go. And then we'll just make some changes. And you know what? I respect Alan Mills for wanting to get a shot at the majors. And if he were any better with players... I would hire him to be my bench coach, but he's not, so that's fine. Uh, very ouch, Harold Cole. Very ouch. Um, you play second, but you don't play short, and you don't play third. If I put Clay Fisher on the roster, I'll never get rid of him. Uh, Perez, I think he would be a perfectly acceptable substitute. And then let's come back here and regenerate the depth chart. You really like batting Hendrick second, huh? It's an interesting strategy. I guess I kind of get it. But I don't know if I would put him there. I guess a little bit better, a little bit lower in the order. Yeah, Hendrick's really turning it around. Um, he's having a much... It's maybe not quite as good as his first season, but it's still very good. And he's still hitting lots of homers. And driving lots of people in, which is what he's getting paid for. Bobby, what the hell? I don't know, man. I do not know.
I feel like I'm being unrealistic to a certain degree, but then I look at his minor league track record. I know my scout thinks he's got loads of power. But he only hit double digits twice in the minors. And... I can't see... I don't see any value to paying him a bunch of money to be fairly... Uh, Fairly below average. He's stealing bases. Great. He's also striking out. And only hitting doubles. And not making much contact. And Ryan Mountcastle, my dude. I don't know what the hell happened to you this season. I genuinely have no freaking clue, but you seem to have just totally lost it. Just utterly, utterly lost it. And that's... It's not that bad. Um, and you've had such a good track record that one has chalked this up as a lost season. Like, you have never slugged below 450 in the majors. Ever. You've never hit below 260. I think this is just one of those weird seasons and that maybe toward the end of it, he'll start getting hot. No problems with Mountcastle. Wit worries me. And I think if I don't see a significant improvement by the end of the season, I think I'm going to trade him in the offseason. Okay, before we start saying things like that, is there even anyone that I would pick as an automatic improvement? If Moore could play third base, I'd actually think about it. I would very strongly consider it. But he can't. Which is fine. Um, I mean, I could move Garcia over to third, which is actually his worst position, so... Worst position. Um, Hernaiz can't play third. You've kind of lucked out, Mr. Witt, and that you have the one position I don't have backups for. In any real sense. I've got some interesting third baseman low in the minors. But it's going to take years for them to be major league ready. Um, all three of you are getting my direct involvement. A 21-year-old reliever is not starting in rookie ball. You're going to start in single A. I just can't, I cannot justify that to myself, letting you pitch at the lowest of the low. Chris Thomas. Let me take over your development to... All right. Neil and Reese. Reese and Neil. Both of you are ready for Triple F. As is Senor Herrera. We have a very good bullpen that's just not pitching that well this season. And Diaz is probably the worst of them. What's even his deal this year? It looks like he's just getting hit. And I can't control that, obviously. I can't tell him, stop letting pitchers hit you. I could make someone else the closer, but I also don't know who that would be.
All right, let's juggle the bullpen a bit. Um, you're demoted to regular manual, man, middle relief. And Sprake, I think, is going to be my new setup guy. Yeah, Clace is really struggling this season. And to be fair, he's only ever had the one good season for us, which was last season. Yeah, he's just giving up walks, which is not his MO at all. Maybe taking a bit of the pressure off of him will be good for him. I don't know. Um, okay. Anyone I want to trade for purposes of I'm not re-signing them, so I might as well get something for them? Maybe Caleb Ferguson? Like, Ferguson has been fine, if not exceptional. Can I turn him into an asset? Okay, if I traded Ferguson, who would become my fifth starter? Probably Kabarkas. Maybe Peak. Actually, probably Peak, in all honesty. What's the market for a Caleb Ferguson these days? I will take on salary, actually. I'm going to decide in his case that I at least want to look at some salary and see if I can just get a better starter this year. I get Emerson Hancock back. Uh, no, thank you. Thanks for the offer, though. Um, it's my old pal Ryland Bannon. I remember you. Yeah, you've had one really good season, and it was in the minors. Woof. Sorry, bro. Thad Ward. Jesus the Lizard. I don't know it's not his name, but I keep saying Lizardo, and I think Lizardo. Yeah, most of these are either not actually upgrades or not worth it. Which is fair. Oh, sorry. Which is totally fair. Um... No one has to give me what I'm looking for. I can always buy a new starting pitcher in the minors. Uh, in free agency, rather, if I need one. Oh, Emerson Hancock. I so made the right decision to get rid of you. Wow, you've got him pitching in double A. That's a big oof. Yeah, I know I didn't get much for you, but I most importantly got rid of this. I no longer feel the ticking time bomb. And I'm very happy about that. I don't mind bringing back De La Cruz, actually. Like, he's been very good. Although, the problem always becomes... Is he just a one-year wonder? You know, even with Colorado last year, though, he was actually pretty solid. And I think if he'd pitched anywhere but Colorado, we'd have seen a better year from him. Yeah, I think it's worth locking him down a bit. 
Let's offer him some cash. Um, what about Kyle Doey? I mean, he's what we need him to be. The question is, how much money does he want? He wants to be paid like a closer. My dude, you're not a closer. Zach Pop. Um... He's a very good reliever. I'm not going to say he's not. But I'm also not going to say he's worth millions of dollars a year. Can I trade you? I'm getting a lot more offers, which is great to see. Although, admittedly... They're not exciting offers. They are offers. All right. Um, Jake Tucker has very, very good tools to succeed. He just hasn't succeeded yet. He's a nice long-term replacement for him. The only other offer that looks even halfway interesting is Kevin G. Or Gee, maybe. I'm not sure. I mean... What if I had regulars and veterans? Let's, let's get all the offers, right? Because this is a legitimately very good relief pitcher. That I have no intention of re-signing. And if I can get a good player out of it, why wouldn't I? It's Manoa. I remember you. I still don't want you. But I remember you. Um, oh. oh, sorry. I think I'm going to take Luke Little. Like, he could solve one of two areas for me. One, he could be a great back end of the bullpen. Or two, uh, he could be a good starting pitcher. Either one of those things is possible. And I'm really intrigued to see what he might make of himself. I'm going to keep looking, but I find it very hard to believe I take anyone other than Luke Little. Otanias, maybe. I love the upside, though, for our other friend. It's Anthony Garcia. How did you turn out? You turn out as crappy as I thought you might. That's vindicating. I had such high hopes for you, and you've just never made it, which is a real shame, but it's what happens, right? I love doing this. I love seeing old friends and knowing that I was justified to trade them. It's a really great feeling. Give me Luke Little. Oh, David Stearns, this is why you're getting replaced. I will see if they'll throw in a prospect, but I wouldn't throw in a prospect. But maybe they will. Who's to say? I certainly wouldn't mind trying to mitigate my risk. I don't think that's an unfair thing to ask by asking for another starting pitcher. Can I get Willie De Los Santos? You'd never accept it, and you are really high on him. Okay. 
<clears throat> you're very intelligently not giving me any of your better prospects, which is very understandable. How about Mr. Zicoli? Meh. Dale Gale, huh? Can I have Dale Gale? He seems super cool. He'll think about it. You know what? Let's submit the offer. Finish the day. Oh, you want one of my very best players. So how's about you go fuck yourself? I just want him because of his name. How about Joe Locke? No. Dude, you are absolutely high on your own supply when it comes to these players. Can I get Ronnie Rojas? What would I have to throw in? Okay, bad players. Done. I get an okay third base prospect, and I get someone who could be... A solution to multiple problems. But for right now, he's going to be the emergency starter long reliever. I do have Max Meyer true, too, as well, if I need someone to try to take up that load of the fifth starter. I approve. I think it's time to accept Pierrep for what he is, too. Which is, he's going to throw a bunch of innings. He's going to give up the occasional homer. But he's also going to strike people out. And he's not going to walk many. <coughs> and unlike Hancock, I have no issues paying a premium for that. He is extremely solid. And with the chance of becoming fantastic. Syndergaard is Syndergaard. He's always going to give up homers. And I can't control that. He's also just getting old. He is what he is. Um, Do I give Luke Little a shot in the rotation now? I don't think so. Not yet. I want to see him pitch a little bit in the my in the rotation before I decide to replace him. Okay. Um. Do I try to trade Hair Nyes one more time? Oh, look whose demands have become more reasonable. Hmm. Funny that. And look who's become insane with wanting more money. Um, Tawa, I can't commit to you long term. Um, not yet. So how about we do this? How about we do a two-year deal? No. I'm going to go to arbitration with you. I have to. I can't afford to pay you what you think you're worth. And now let's finally try to trade Hair Nice one more time. There's got to be a market for him. Here we go. Now I'm getting names. I'm getting interesting names. All right. Uh, it looks like clearly the best choices are going to be from Atlanta. They offered two or three different prospects. You seem to be quite nice. I do need to start thinking about a long-term replacement for first base. Um, especially if Mountcastle doesn't bounce back. But yeah, Atlanta's offering me two possible pitchers. Uh, no to Sean Dozier. Yes to Tim Stack. I like Stack a lot better because his movement is better and he's got a bigger variety of quality pitches.
That said, before I grab him, um, do I want anything else? Sorry, I thought you was calm. Um, eh. you know, I'm at least going to look at Justin Jenkins. He's a really good power hitter with really good defense, but other than that, he's not an exceptional first baseman. Okay, I had to check. I would have been remiss in my duties as a general manager slash manager if I didn't take a look at him. But I think Stack is the call. Uh, I know Dozier's got really good stuff, and he's got better pitches. But that movement really concerns me, and I have to be extremely cautious about that. Because unless someone is a strikeout superstar, they're going to run into problems when they give up home runs. So I'm going to get me some Tim stack. A stack of Tim, if you will. Can I get really greedy and ask for them both? Or are you just going to tell me to go fuck myself? I'd love to get my hands on rookie of gear. Like, holy shit. That's an amazing hitter. But I'm also pretty sure you're going to tell me to go to hell. Can I offer you something? Can I offer you a replacement outfielder? Like one Roe Smart Quintana. That doesn't really move the needle for you. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I love great contact hitters, though. But I can't give up. What if I drop stack? No. I pretty much have to give you one of my great outfielders now. Can I get stack and dozier? Because why get one pitching prospect when you could get two, right? That's just math. Uh, you want a crappy shortstop to get two pitching prospects. I really want a gear, though. He's so good. Um, I don't mind insulting you if I have to. All right, Quintana. And Clark. He is such a good prospect. So good. Um, look, OSA thinks he could be super amazing. We merely think he's going to be extremely amazing. I could give you Ryan Mountcastle. Which is frankly kind of tempting. But no. I think this is where we trade from our prospect depth. Let's throw in Eric Benedict. I can't do it. I cannot gut my farm system. I can't give you molar too. Give you Calvary Clark. He 
he just wants too much. If, now here's the thing. If I knew that Mount Castle wasn't going to come back, I would put him in the deal and not break a sweat about it. But since I don't know that, it's dangerous to make that assumption. It just is. Um, so I'm just going to take what I've got here. This is a fantastic deal. And then I can leave that space open because I think Cole is coming back in a few days. And where did you put my new pitching prospects? Here they are. Uh, Nicholson, you're going to A. Stack, where were you? You were in high A. I'm going to put you back there then. And then Dozier, you were also in high A. Perfect. That was a smart trade. I, I really like that trade, and it doesn't hurt us much at the moment. Uh, where's Graffanino? He would be the perfect addition to this team right now. And just in terms of having another backup. Man, Judson Fabian, you you seem kind of like a disappointment to me because of how great you were in the minors. But you know what? There's value in this. And maybe he's just going to take a bit of time to get used to it. It's fine. Um, let's proceed. This has episode has gotten a bit longer than I had planned on it being. But we're making a lot of moves that I think are going to shore up our team for the future. I get him back, which is lovely. Ah, another game where we just get massacred in the minors. That's fine. Oh, how many pitchers do I have? Did I just make an error? No, I still got 13. Okay, perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Can I get you to sign a longer term deal? No. Well, that's fine. Nope. All right, fine. I tried. Let's go ahead and extend your contract. And Tawa is now the one guy I've got to make some decisions on. If I traded Moeller, do I have a, a good backup catcher waiting in the minors? I don't know that I do. I've got Ceruto here. He wouldn't be the worst. I'm going to go to arbitration with him because he's actually not as good as he looks. And we're going to see if he can uh, save some money there. A lot of what we're doing right now, I know it kind of seems like shuffling miners for miners. But that's what you have to do to stay, to keep a good solid system. Yeah, Bobby Wood's starting to tank. Um, Tawa got a little bit better. Neil's really taking a triple A, which I love to see. Casey Schmidt starting to slip. Nate Gould is becoming a better first baseman, which is good, I guess. A 
Danny Lamel seems to be taking shortstop uh, by Storm. And that's fine. Um... I would like to shortlist Mr. Lamelli. I just want to see how he develops. He is of interest to me. I'm actually going to take over his development. I want to challenge him a bit. And I'm going to challenge him by sending him up to a ball. He's 20 years old. He's old for his league. And he's still playing very well. But I think he needs a bit more of a challenge. I'm going to send you to Class A Delmarfa. And we're just going to see what you can build on. What do we got here? All players. This is a big yikes. Um, there's not a lot here to get excited about. I'd offer Amaya a decent sized contract. Yeah. He's not the best, but he's, I mean, he is the best in this group. But he's certainly not very good. That's what I was looking for. <clears throat> oh, Vizcaino. Yeah, he's starting to get greedy now, which is fair. He's been really, really talented. Uh, oh, you're just a Herrera. You're not the Herrera. That's fine. Yeah, Vizcaino, you know I like you, dude, but I'm not going to pay up through the nose for you, so disabuse yourself of that notion right now. I'm already a little salty about how much I paid for Clay's, and he's actually still pretty decent. I don't think Jack Leiter has a chance of winning a second consecutive tripping, pitching triple crown. Tripping, pitching, crowned. Sorry, that didn't make any sense at all. Yes, I get it. You beat the ever-living shit out of my rookie league team. All-Star Game. Why is Jack Leiter's name not here? Oh, there it is. Phew. I thought for a moment. Hey, Brandon Hendricks. Nice. You know, you had a convoluted path to the majors, but I'm glad that you've stuck. Uh, no one in the bullpen. Adley Rushman makes it. Understandable. Daniel Cabrera makes it. Equally understandable. And Austin Hendrick makes it, which is actually kind of surprising. Uh, but I'll take it. It's always good for me to see that we have lots of all-stars because it mean, it, it's reinforcing to me that we made the right call. Didn't Jack Flaherty used to be on my team? Why do I remember that name? Maybe I had him in a different series. Maybe it wasn't this one. Yeah, he never played for me. Okay. Fair. Okay. And what about the prospect game? Danny Lamelli made it. Manny Mendez made it. Brendan Hirschbauer made it. That's three. Nice.
I really don't know what to do with Quintana. Um, I have so many players with such a similar skill set. I don't have to rush, though. But I do need to figure out what to do with him at some point. How did our players do? Lamelli played first base, drew two walks, and got a hit. Which was a double. Very nice. Her shower got roughed up a little bit, which is not as nice. And what about Mendez? He struck out twice. Okay. Well, not everyone's perfect. Look at that name. Mm, Mike Vanderplug. He's a really damn good player. Like, really, really good. Out of interest, just throwing it out there. Can I get me some Vanderplug? What if I offered you two of my outfielders? What? So, let's consider what this does for us. This gives us a possible elite level center fielder. Um, it gives us insurance in case Tawa gets hurt. And all it's costing me is a worse version of him. I actually like Quirindongo's power though. I don't have anyone else with his power. Who else could I add in? Hey, you want Landsville? You can have Landsville. That's even better. So I'm trading one player that I don't have an easy spot for for a player that will get a spot in the very near future. And if his ability to draw walks isn't what I'd like it to be, he's still got plenty of time to mature. And I'm pulling this trigger right now. And I'm instantly sending you to Triple uh, A. Oh no, I gotta put you on the 40 man. Oh no, please don't make me put the great player on the 40 man. Uh, please go to Triple A. You are my Tawa insurance. That is your job right now. Your job is to be very good <clears throat> at baseball. Yes. Dude, you've got so much power. I have to give you a chance to make the Major League roster at some point. You're raw. And I'm definitely not going to call you up now. Um, Important question for you, my dear friend. Could you play the infield? No, you couldn't. Okay, I tried. Now, you can argue Quintana would have actually been better than Fabian, and I would agree, maybe. But, yeah. I could just make Quirindongo learn first base. But no, I'm not going to do that. Um, that would be a silly decision. Daniel Cabrera, is there anything you can't do? Wait, why are you considered fragile? I don't like the sound of that. Please don't be. <laughs> yeah. I have never been happier with a prospect trade than that one. Now, losing Quintana is the downside of that trade. And I fully accept that. 
Quintana could be an excellent player. And we'll never get to find out. Which is fine. Uh, can you play first? Nope. Eh, fair. You know, I've got some I've got some ideas for how to deal with first base if Mr. Uh, Mount Castle doesn't get his shit together. Okay. Do you have anyone on the home run challenge? No one from Baltimore ever gets to make it, and that makes me sad. I mean, I guess I get it. Uh, when you have Jordan Alvarez, who just hits all the homers. I could manually put somebody in there, but that wouldn't feel right to me. Nah. Nah. We'll skip it and then go to the All-Star game and then end the episode. How did our players do in the All-Star game? Tristan Casas. Okay. That's fair. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm ambivalent about losing Quintana. And I think he could be a special player too. But I had to make a move to shore up center field because I'm going to call it now. Tall was not going to age well. I know the last two seasons he's been very good and I respect his ability. But I also know this is the kind of skill set that doesn't age super well because he doesn't have much discipline. And that's going to be the biggest hole in his game. Now, the downside of Tawa is one of the best fourth outfielders the game has ever seen. But, if Vanderplug can take his amazing name uh, and improve his ability to hit for contact, and improve his discipline even a tiny bit, I think this is our center fielder of the future. And we're definitely going to give him some time in AAA to figure it out before we call him up. I am still really excited by the outfield contingent we have. It's just a different group now. And we honestly probably need to start making some decisions about keeping people on the 40-man. I think we're at about that level that that's a decision we need to start making. Because I don't want to lose these intriguing outfielders for nothing. But that's a that's a topic for a later episode and most likely this offseason. For now, I hope you guys have been enjoying this episode. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the series. Uh, if you haven't already, do subscribe to the channel for more Out of the Park action every Friday morning at 8 a.m. Until next time, this has been Avendian. Thank you for watching, and I bid you good day.